I remember my first computer. It had an enormous 20 megabyte hard drive. Now, storage devices can hold thousands of times more memory while getting smaller, like this tiny micro SD card. So what do you do with an old hard drive? Well, you turn it into something else. The victim for this project will be this 10-year-old Western Digital 80 gigabyte hard drive. But first, we need to get inside. I'll be using this handy little screwdriver kit that has all kinds of bits, including a T8 Torx. It's time to remove all the screws in this case, including this one hidden screw that's under the label. Removing the cover reveals the shiny inside of this hard drive. It's a work of art. While many hard drives contained multiple platters, this one only has one platter to store the magnetic data. Oh, and don't forget to hang on to the screws we removed during this project because we'll be using some of them later. Now there's more than one special goodie inside these non-digital hard drives, and one of them is right here, part of what's called the actuator. I removed the two screws to free it up, and on the underside, you'll find a super strong magnet. To get that magnet, I had to put it in my pan of ice, a screwdriver and a hammer, and a couple of taps, and I've freed up this magnet. I'm sure it'll come in handy for something. Now onto the platter removal, and for that, we'll be using a T6 Torx. We'll remove all the screws for the spindle, and when that's done, this little piece comes off, and that frees up our platter. Technology always amazes me. This piece of metal contains all kinds of data that was read and written to. We've got to keep removing stuff, including the DC spindle motor, which has three screws, and then it pops out. This powerful little motor used to spin that platter at 7200 RPM. That's fast. So we'll put this motor in the vise, and then a screwdriver and a hammer and a couple of taps, and we'll remove the motor axis. Flip it over, and a couple of more taps, and we'll remove the bearing. Now we have a hollow motor access that we're going to use for this clock. Now back to the hard drive, where we're going to pop out a few screws to remove the circuit board in the back, and this little rubber insulator as well. We want a nice clean look in the back of the clock. I also removed the actuator arm that contains the read-write heads. Okay, we're getting there. The next piece is this quartz clock movement. You could pick these up in a craft store for about five bucks. It's basically a quartz clock movement that's powered by a single AA battery. And the shaft on this is going to go through the motor access, but as you can see, the hole is too small on that, so it's time to do a little drilling. We'll start off with a smaller size bit and go slow and steady through this metal and then we'll increase the size of our bit to the size that that shaft on the clock will fit through. Ah, now we're good to go. I'm still going to need a little bit more depth, so these thread nubs on the back of the hard drive need to be ground down. So, out to the shop where I'll grind those down flush. Now it's time for my favorite goop, hot glue. I'll apply a generous bead around the top of this clock movement and then lower the hard drive housing over it. Yep, I cut myself and it wasn't pretty. Then another bead of hot glue around the top of the clock movement and we'll secure the motor access. I'm gonna add a special touch to this hard drive clock and that's LEDs. I show two here, but I'll end up using three blue LEDs. I need a place for my wiring to go, so I'm gonna punch a small hole through this little metal taped area. That'll be enough to run my wires. So my three LEDs are wired up in series and I've got some insulation on the contacts. They're ready to go. I added a small switch to fire up these LEDs that are going to provide a nice blue backlight for my clock. Time for more glue that is hot. I'll be using that to secure each LED in place under the platter. The 9 volt battery will be held in place just by wedging it between the clock movement and the side of the hard drive body. And the switch for the LEDs is also secured with some hot glue. Now, if you're going to run the backlight for an extended period of time, you might want to replace that 9-volt battery with an AC adapter. I decided on these small quarter-inch vinyl letters and numbers to make the time markings on the platter, and with a pair of tweezers, started carefully laying them out. I did the binary code for 12, 3, 6, and 9 for my clock face. We are almost done. Time to secure the platter with the spindle ring, and because I needed a little bit more length, added my own screws. After reinstalling the actuator arm, it's time to figure out a way to hold this clock up. The two threaded holes that held the circuit board in place will be the perfect place to mount a little stand. And I decided to use this small metal bracket from an old erector set. The holes in the bracket match up perfectly with the thread mounts. 
I bent the bottom half of this bracket in my vise and used the original screws and some small washers to secure it. Okay, the final step is to add the arms for the clock movement, the hour hand, minute hand, and second hand. Add the AA battery and our retro hard drive clock is done. It's high tech and vintage all at the same time. And those blue LEDs create a really awesome backlight. So that's how to turn an old hard drive into a clock. Retrofitting technology is so much fun, but there's some things that need no improvements, like the new high-tech razors from Harry's. I've been telling you about Harry's for a couple of years now, and there's a good reason. Their German-engineered five-blade cartridges give me a close shave every time with no nicks or cuts. Plus, they're stylish, and I don't even have to go to the store because they're delivered to my door. In fact, their quality is guaranteed and they'll give you a full refund if you're not happy. It's crazy to pay 32 bucks for an eight pack of blades when you can get them for half the price at harrys.com. Now, when I first tried them, I got hooked because of the Harry's Starter Kit. It's an amazing deal, and for only 15 bucks, you get a weighted razor handle of your choice, moisturizing shave cream, three precision-engineered five-blade cartridges, and a travel cover. And because Harry's has been sponsoring my content for some time now, they have a special deal just for my fans. Harry's will give you $5 off your first order with the promo code KIPK5. And for a limited time only, there's a special offer for fans of my show where you can get it for less. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com and use the promo code KIPK5 at checkout to save five bucks off your first order. Click on the link below to start a new shaving experience with harrys.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.